Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the bomber. This is their part number BB5066 ETW8 545N TMS 630. This is an electric transfer hinge is what it is. This is the box that it comes out of. That's the part number. They have a BP, uh, BB5066 545 ETW 08. It's an eight wire hinge and a 630 finish. Let's take a look at it right here. There you go. You have four pair or eight wires going through this hinge. This is a heavyweight stainless steel hinge, five by four and a half, uh, obviously ball bearing, five knuckle, uh, stainless based satin finish with a with four pair or eight wires running through it that are 26, 28 gauge is what they are. Now, what would you use this hinge for? Well, it's a it's a energy or or power transfer hinge, and what you would use it for would be to be able to have hardware on your door that needs to have electrical communication back to the rest of the access control system. So electric transfer hinges are four, six, eight, ten, twelve wire hinges generally. Everything that you're probably going to do on the door, um, in most instances, four wires or two pair is adequate. You're going to have, you know, a request to exit switch. It'll be a micro switch that'll have a common, a normally open, a normally closed, you know, two pair of wires or four wires is adequate for that. But it, when you add other functionality, let's say that you have, um, first of all, you always want to have a spare pair of wires. That's in, that's considered best best practice. So you can have an exit device that will have electrified trim on the outside. Okay, you'll need a pair of wires for that. You can have a request to exit switch inside of the bar itself. You can have latch bolt monitoring so that you can tell if someone's tamper, you can tell if the latch bolt has been moved, if someone wanted to hit that and then exit. The request to exit, when you hit the touch bar, will report back to access control. You can then, of course, control it electrically by controlling that exterior lever trim. So you're going to be at eight wires immediately. Uh, you could have an electric strike that you have an electric strike and then you have. Uh, latch bolt uh, position monitor, and you could, and you would have uh, keeper uh, monitoring. You're going to need ten wires for that kind of situation. And in that electric strike scenario, you'll need two for power, and then for your latch bolt presence monitoring. Well, I mean, you know, you you could use three there. You'll need two. You could use three, depending on what you want to happen. When the latch bolt is there, you might want to send a green light or a red light. And when the latch bolt's not there, you might want to do the opposite, you know, have the other light. Same with the keeper monitoring. You might want to have, you know, um, you know, who knows, report back to a central control station. You might want an enunciator. So eight wires is you know, an easy hinge to bump into. This client's job, um, actually, I will tell you what they're running on this because I have the exit device part number in front of me. Let's determine why they needed an eight wire hinge. And the exit device that the client has is a Sergeant. They've got an RX. Okay, so you've got a request to exit. Uh, so you're gonna need a pair of wires for their minimum. They have a 55, which is a signal switch in the rail. They have a 56, which is remote dogging latch retraction. RX 5556, yeah, sure. So they've got request to exit. They've got a signal switch in the rail. They have... Um, the 56 which is remote dogging or latch retraction so you can see immediately why you'd need an eight wire hinge when you you know if you were to pull up the wiring diagram of that exit device you'll quick quickly come up with the potential wires how you're going to have your understanding over the this access control system this appears to be a single door 
Um, in ter uh, this is a single door, what we've got here on the paperwork for the client. I don't know what, you know, how many openings are on the project. Um, so you can see where you'd get to eight wires really quick. You want to have a pair left over. Why a pair left over? Well, in case you nick one is the bottom line. Something becomes damaged, you have a, a spare pair of wires. You might have an electric strike. It's going to be, you know, two wires for power. You would never find a two-wire electric hinge. It will only be a four-wire. So on this client's project, that's how they got to that quantity of wires. Um, and all of the wires are color-coded, obviously. They're, you know, turned over at the end. This is how they're packaged. Uh, now, this is a, and we're going to dissect the part number. It's a BB hinge. It's a ball bearing hinge. It is four bearing packets when it's a heavyweight hinge. This hinge, I think, will be 190 thousandths uh, when it's a five inch tall hinge, which is the height of this hinge. My caliper is telling me 0.18. Six, okay. So it's a heavyweight hinge, nominally 190 thousandths. Uh, ball bearing, heavyweight, five knuckle. It's a full mortise hinge. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaves there why we would call it a full mortise hinge. The little bends here and here on that hinge leaf, when the leaves are brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame, and that would be typical and common for this. Um, part of that part number also tells us that it is a electric transfer hinge uh, as well um, and we'll dissect that part number I'll show you how we build the part number the ETW that just means electric through wire and then the number after it is the quantity of wires running through it there's evidence of the drilling that's occurred in the side of these leaves okay these uh, types of hinges are thoroughly non-serviceable. You can't drive the pin out. Please don't try. It'll destroy the hinge most likely. Um, is not meant to be uh, load-bearing at all. You'll install this in the middle position. That's where it's recommended to install this. Um, never install it in the top location because it's not load-bearing. The top hinge takes 70% of the weight of the door uh, so you would never put that there. Putting it at the bottom, it's not recommended to put it at the bottom. Um, I can't tell you why it's not recommended to put this hinge at in the lowest or bottom location. You know, it could have a lot to do with just simply the fact that that bottom of the door seems to get a lot of the um, twist transferred down to it. So I don't know that I would want this hinge trying to keep the door straight to the frame where that middle hinge is really going to be insulated by the hinges top and bottom, allowing it to do nothing other than transfer power and just keep the door in line with the frame, maybe preventing any small sort of warp that might occur. The four five, uh, pardon me, the five four five means it's five inch tall. The height is the first dimension. Okay, that is indeed the case. It's four and a half inch wide. Why would you want a hinge that would be four and a half inch wide when it's five inch tall? Well, it's probably because it's a better choice than a five by five. And the bottom line is, from your, your frame, your door in the frame, where should your vertical axis of pivoting be? How far out should it be? You want it as close to the center as possible. So as you move that vertical, as you make the hinge wider, you increase that distance of the vertical axis of pivoting. The difference between a five by five and a five by four and a half is only a quarter inch difference in the vertical axis of pivoting. But best practice tells us, tuck that up as close to the face of the door as possible. And you're going to determine that based on your conditions. You know, how, what's the degree of opening? Is it 90 or does it have to go past that? Is there a frame condition, a wall condition, applied material condition that would limit the door from swinging out there based on the hinge that you selected? The point of that is don't opt for the 5x5 five five or the 4.5x4.5. Four and four and Think about your 4.5x4s, your 5x4.5s. Tucking that hinge access, access in closer is uh, a better way to design your opening. You want projecting hardware kept to a minimum. If these doors swing out and you've got people walking by, I've cracked the crown of my watch over the decades on countless things, hinges projecting into the opening being one of them. So you want to tuck all that back. Not only barrels of hinges, but lips of strikes as well is what you really want to do. 
So, why is the height the first dimension on the hinge? Well, I don't know exactly why, but I do liken it to, you know, tell me the information that I want to know first. You know, I need to know the width and the height, obviously, but tell me the information first that's probably more appropriate to hear it in a proper sequence. It's like this. If I tell you to drive to a certain destination, you, what do you want to know first? The rate of speed or the direction? You know, I want to know both, but tell me which way to head first. You know, so the height is the first dimension because it's a tip-off. It tells us a lot about the door. A five-inch tall hinge tells, starts to tell me a lot about the door. And then when I know the width, it fills in the missing pieces. But the height, I think, is the important thing. A five-inch hinge, that's probably going to be a, well, it is a high-volume three-foot door. Or it is a moderate volume use door wider than uh, three foot. You know, you go from four and a half to five and you pick up about 20% additional capacity over the hinge to carry the load. So I'm automatically tipped off as to what, not only the size of the door based on industry conventions, but the potential level of use on the door as well. Uh, meaning, you know, you can, when you hear five inch, you can exclude so many things that it won't be. Okay. It's not going to be a, 4080 lead line door. You're gonna, okay. It's not going to be anything like that. It's not going to be a residential uh, entry door to a home. So you start to exclude what it's not. The N in the part number really means non-removable pin. This is not a non-removable pin in the sense that it doesn't have a set screw, which would be the evidence of an NRP hinge. This hinge pin is most definitely non-removable. While I suppose you could grind and cut that off, it again would destroy the hinge. So in essence, it's a non-removable hinge. The 630 tells us two things. It tells us it's made of stainless steel and that it is in a brushed finish. The most durable of all finishes is the 630, also known as US32D. That tells us it's a natural finish over a natural base material. All you've done to that piece of solid stainless is brush it. That's all you've done. If you're looking for the most durable hinge, in terms of finish, 630 is it. Um, anything other than that, like a, 620, a 652, also known as US 2060, uh, plating over uh, steel base material, not going to be as durable as this. Uh, 626, uh, also known as 2060, a plating over brass base material, not as durable as solid stainless. And that uh, brings us to the next part, the TMS, template machine screws. I indicated to the factory that this client wanted all machine screws, template machine screws, because there is a piece of reinforcing that's been welded into the door and frame that is meant to take a particular type of screw, and that's what it has been supplied with. This is a 1224 flat undercut head, thread forming, stainless Phillips drive, probably 11 16 length, no, nah, not that long maybe 7 16 length. Anyway, it's a typical hinge screw. They did also toss in here four wood screws. They were not specified. They are, they, and in fact, you would certainly argue they shouldn't be in there. Uh, in fact, if you were going to do the job correctly, you would remove those screws from the package and send the balance off to the client because you want to present to your client what's on the paperwork. You want to have presented to the field what they need to install, nothing more, nothing less. You might have someone say, well, the screws were in the package. That's what I used. Okay. Yeah. You wouldn't use a wood screw on a metal door. You know, if you work in the door hardware industry long enough, you'll start to realize you've seen everything and that you continue to see new things every day. So the proper way to go would be that those ought not to have been included, but it's going to be kind of standard packaging for the factory. All machine screws, half wood screws, sure. All wood screws, all machine screws, okay. You know, but define it is the point, and I defined it to the factory. Let's switch to the screen view now, and let's take a closer look at all the supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the item that we are looking at. Let's take some photographs we have posted down below. There's the box. Here's the hinge, indicating that it is a UL listed product for use on, for, for uh, electrical um, approval. 
That's showing it's a full mortise hinge. You can see from the swag or the bend on the hinge leaf here as it pertains to the barrel that that makes it a full mortise hinge. If you change that bend, you change the type of hinge that you have. That's the back side. It's obvious that ACSI has done the modification to the bomber hinge for bomber. There it is. There are your wire leads, showing one of them, or one bundle of four. There's your logo right above it, made in USA, a fact that Bomber's quite proud of. Your screw pack. These are thread forming screws. That means that they're going to help clear the paint out of the threads in the door and frame when you're installing them. Okay. There is also uh, a cut sheet down below. Let's take a look at the cut sheet. So there's two pages to this cut sheet, and the first is going to show us the BB5006, while th meaning this is the base hinge. It's a BB5006 base hinge. That hinge is available in these different sizes or size combinations. Heavyweight, ball bearing, stainless steel base material. Then we have the cut sheet more appropriate, page two for the application, shows us the BB5066. In this document, talks about the same information. It's a BB5066. It's a six in the last column because it's a stainless steel base material. Again, heavyweight, ball bearing, but now it's an electric hinge because we added that six in this column. This will allow you to review the power transfer options. I just said that you can't do a two-wire hinge, but they have it listed. I've never seen a two-wire hinge. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, you know, under no circumstances would I recommend that two-wire hinge. Um, ETW are for doors requiring low voltage, electric current transfer capability only. Through wire, 28 gauge for 4, 6, 8, 10, or 12 wire hinges. And we're going to look at the installation instructions in a moment. They talk about concealed electric magnetic monitor. Concealed electric through wire with magnetic monitor. There is the profile of the rating of our 28 gauge uh, wires 50 volt AC or DC max, 3.5 amps continuous 16 amp pulse. Uh, we'll clarify that when we get to the manufacturer's installation instructions. Template. So it's a template hinge, meaning that. We can review the doc, the template, the technical drawing for the item, and show you the locations for the screw holes, which happen to be positioned in what we call the template pattern. And that template is linked down below, and here it is. This will show you the dimensional properties important for this hinge. Shows you the locations of those screw holes. Okay, and if you were to compare these locations against a door and frame prepped for this hinge with hole locations in the template pattern, you would see that they would match. There's lots of different hole patterns. You can have your zigzag patterns. You'll have a reverse pattern to this. Hinges that are well over 100 years old had a reverse pattern to this. They had staggered patterns as well. You'll see all kinds of uh, patterns when you look, especially not so much in a 5-inch hinge, certainly not in a modern 5-inch hinge. But if you look at residential four-inch tall hinges, lots of different patterns there. So this template will show you the location of the holes. We'll give you the swag line for your five by four, four and a half, five, six, seven, and eight inch wide hinges all through here. Okay. So pretty handy in that regard. Shows you the leaf thickness as well and the gap between the two leaves when they're brought parallel, the sixteenth of an inch. So that's your template that's linked down below. Four ball bearings, five knuckles, non-removable uh, tip, pin, and plug, 12-inch wire leads. You can also go with 48-inch wire leads should you need. I've never had anyone request that. Um, but you've got to bring wire everywhere. So you know having that may be advantageous to you. You might want to do your termination somewhere uh, further away on the frame or wall side than the back of the... Uh, crowded space behind the jam, uh, or in the mortar box, you might want to might want to 
you know, have that happen, that the termination of the wires happen outside of there. Pull it through into your conduit to somewhere else, I suppose. Listed for security equipment, tested for UL-634. It's an ANSI BHMA A156.10 compliant hinge, tested 350,000 cycles. Um, even though the BB5006 is certainly a grade one hinge that it's been tested to 50% more than grade, grade one requirements. Okay, so electrical information here. Now let's look at the installation instructions that, that actually come with this. This top section here simply gives you what wires you can expect. Eight 26 or 28 gauge wires. Bomber says they're 28 gauge. Um, four, six, eight, ten, etc. Different configurations, meaning if you know that you need a pair of 18 gauge wires for what you're doing, continuous high amperage application, you'll order a, a 1182 by six. Get the point. If you needed to upgrade two of those, one pair of those wires to 18 gauge, you'd order it this way. Okay. 22, six, and 28 gauge. Wires, three and a half amp continuous at 50 volt max, 16 amp pulse. What's a pulse? Um, certain hardware requires a huge inrush is the term that we use to get the device started to work. And then the holding power of if you have electric latch retraction, you need a lot of amperage to pull that latch back and then a much smaller amount of amperage to keep the latch held back. You might have a timer running on it. This will handle uh, a 16 amp pulse or an inrush for four tenths of a second is the point. If you needed to run that continuously or something you'll need to, um, well, one old trick is to just double up your wires. Um, you know, so be sure to order more wires if that's what you're going to do or just order the proper gauge of wire. Uh, let's see here now. They can do optional connectors. Electrolinks, Allegiance Connect, Asa's Electrolink links. Allegiance Connect, Hager's Quick Connect. It's pretty nice to have those connectors already on the hinge and hardware, so you're just plugging rather than matching up wire colors. Steel hinges are for interior use only. Brass and stainless can be used either interior or exterior. Don't take apart the hinge. It'll damage it and void the warranty. Uh, other information here about monitoring uh, options. Mortar guards are available. Should your frame not already have one, you're going to certainly want one there. You don't want mortar being troweled onto the back of these delicate 28 gauge wires. Door and frame must be prepped in accordance with the template, which we showed earlier. Wire access holes must be free of burrs. Now, we are missing a template here for this, so let's take a look. And they're talking about the holes that you have to prep. For the hinge, well, this is a document that shows us more information about the wire diameter. Let's pull up that prep. And here that document is. So the door hinge reinforcing plate and the frame reinforcing plate need to be drilled. Um, for these wires, and here it is. Again, center hinge location. They want a 5 8 diameter hole positioned exactly here. When they say free of burrs, get in there with a rat tail file and clean all that out. You don't want anything touching those wires. Okay, gives you the location, two and a quarter inch, 0.6 inch. It's an odd place. 0.6 is where it is. Then we do have the hinge installation instructions. This is a bomber generated document. What's nice about it is they do tell you what wire colors you're going to have based on the quantity of wires that you've ordered. Uh, yeah, this is duplicate information, but it's, it's the bomber version of this. And the ACI, ACSI version that's here is the one that's in the box uh, with this hinge. Uh, 
wire access holes must be free of burrs. Verify the hinge fits neatly before proceeding. If it doesn't fit, don't try to screw it in. Hang the door with your top and bottom hinges and then install this in the middle location. Extract the interior wiring from the prepared holes in the door and frame. Terminate the wire connections with appropriate crimp splices or wire nuts. Don't hang on to the hinge by the wires. Insulate all ends of all unused wires. After all terminations are completed, carefully insert the wires into the prepared holes, which I showed you earlier, those 5 8 holes, uh, so that they're not going to be cut or pinched as the template, uh, pardon me, as the hinge is installed. This is a monitor, monitor uh, like a door position switch option that's here, which we won't go over in this video. So lots of paperwork when it comes to this hinge, unfortunately, but you're doing a lot of work with it. Let's now, take a look at the link here to the manufacturer's page. When we click on that, we're going to pull up the manufacturer's page in our site where you can review all things bomber related by means of this horizontal navigation. Also, a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. Um, there's also the how to order matrix. This is just the page out of the catalog. Let's open up the catalog and we'll just scroll to the matrix. Uh, meaning it will allow us to dissect the part number and understand what we're doing. Encyclopedic information uh, is what leads this catalog. If you routinely deal with hinges, reading bombers or uh, any other manufacturers, there are others that have very excellent introduction sections as well. Um, I really wish, you know, what's strange is Regardless of the manufacturer, um, Hager is okay, Stanley is very good, PBB is very good. They have introductory uh, sections to the world of hinges in their, in their catalogs. I really wish that manufacturers did that for panic devices, for door closers, for lock sets. Give me a, you know, you know, a level 100 class on the hardware itself. That'd be very helpful. Uh, good hinge manufacturers, in my opinion, do that, and Bomber does that. So, as we're scrolling through, we're talking about the different types of hinges. This is a somewhat off topic, but I'm showing you this is where you can get that information. If someone calls and says, I need a raised barrel hinge, you have no idea what that is. Well, there it is. You get to learn about that. Um, now, the how to order matrix is here. We have a BB5, five knuckle, zero, full mortise, six electric, six heavyweight stainless steel. Five, four, five is our five by four and a half. We would have an N in here to tell us our security option here. We don't need to have that there. Um, it's going to come that way regardless. They obviously discarded. It's going to come that way in the sense that the hinge is not removable. The pin isn't, um, but they're not going to put a set screw into it. Then you have any other options that you have. Electric options, our ETW08 is here. And then, of course, finishes. These six that are here are just examples. Bomber can do over 30 different finishes, depending on the base material. Maybe 34 or so uh, different finishes. Suffice it to say, the balance of the catalog is full of cut sheets, etc. If you know the name Bomber at all, you might for their 3029 series of double-acting spring hinges. Uh, if you've ever seen a door double act on, on, on hinges, it's probably a bomber or it's certainly a copy of it. There it is. All things spring hinge related is in this bomber catalog, single and double acting. I would encourage you to review this information as well. Let's wrap up this video on camera. So we've talked about what this hinge is, why you use it, where you're going to use it, this client's particular project of why they need it depending on those functionalities that they have there. That puts them in a really good position to have the correct hinge. Um, the name Bomber is synonymous with, um, with hinges, mostly spring hinges. If you know that name again, it's for probably for a spring hinge. But they have commercial hinges as well. I'm a big fan of their product line. Very much so a fan of that made in USA. Um, some people's logo will have USA on it. Doesn't mean it's made in the United States. That's just part of their logo. Um, if that matters to you, the country of origin, um, it does to me uh, and, and, and many other people. Um, note that Bomber's entire product line, entire product line is manufactured in the United States. 
the steel that they buy, all of the supplies that they buy to do their plating, their finishing, is all domestically manufactured. The pens that they purchase to take your order when you call them on the telephone are, are American manufactured pens. So, and, um, you know, Bomber is able to see work because of their exclusive, you know, sourcing of domestic material to make, uh, to make their products, meaning they're able to quote jobs that have that as a requirement, where others cannot. Um, I hope that continues to serve them quite well. I know the people at Bomber, I very deeply appreciate their, my relationship with them because they're expert in every single department. Department by department, they really excel, whether it be customer service, picking, shipping, and receiving, engineering, tech support. They're, they're just, you know, you, you don't have a need for another hinge company, in my opinion. Um, I've been to both of their plants, and I was very um, lucky to have had a personal tour um, by someone very important at, 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 at Bomber. Bomber is a company that was established in 1876 by the two brothers Bomber. Bomber is owned by the husband of the granddaughter of one of the two brothers, so it is literally a family business. It's owned by the granddaughter, but the husband is the gentleman that <laughs> puts his shoes on and goes to work in the morning. <laughs> I didn't. I did not see the, the his wife there. Um, so anyway, any questions on this electric transfer hinge from Bomber or any other Bomber product? Please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.